That's the only Iron Maiden I know. Ace is high in that part. I don't even think that, and I'm tuned down a whole step, so. Never learned Iron Maiden. Someone asked me a question. Have you ever done stories about Iron Maiden? Or do I have I met them? Blah, 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 blah. There's another part of a song, and I, it's off Killers, and I only remember the two chords. <laughs> guitar. Never learned it. I learned the bass. Or I could do the bass, but I'm not going to do it on here. It's stupid. What? No. Of course, I just know what everybody knows. <laughs> stories. The first one I think it was the last one was when they first when Bruce Dickinson first got back together with him. Uh my cousin was working at a radio station. I was out of the business by then, out of music. Not that far out though. It was ninety something, seven, eight when Bruce Dickinson first got I can't remember. And uh she got me front row center a little more to Dave Murray's side, actually. I said, get me, if you can get me more towards him, because I, I, every time I went to Sarah and Maiden, I was on Steve Harris's side. This time I wanted to watch him, and I didn't care about the third guitar player, Young Flappinson, that runs around the stage throwing his guitar. I don't know his name. Um, anyways, this is the first show that they're doing with Bruce back and the new lineup with the third guitar player and she gets me front row at the Greek theater here it's not big and you know it's not festival it's seats and you gotta you know until at least they go on and sit down but there's seats there so people can't get crazy it's just right there so I'm sitting right here and she could only get me one ticket. So I just had a friend drop me off. I'm like, dude, pick, you know, 
I'll call you pick me up which was very nice of that friend so I'm sitting there and I keep getting this tapping on my back you know I'd shave my head I think I, I might have had a ponytail I don't know which no I was making yeah I didn't have the ponytail yeah, it was totally shaved. So, anyways, I just can't remember the year. But uh, I keep getting this tap and tap, tap, tap. I'm like, what? And I turn around, and it's goofball Marilyn Manson and Twiggy. And Marilyn was tapping me. And I'm like, dude, what? He goes, I trade your seats. I go, no. You're kidding me. I, there's no way I'm trading seats with anybody. He goes, Come on, dude, man. I, I, I love Iron Maiden. I go, I love Iron Maiden. I love him more than you. You know, you sit with your friend. Because if one of you comes up, the other one's going to be, I'm going to sit with the other one. And most likely, it's going to be you. So I'm going to have to st sit next to Smelly in the dress. No way. So, Twiggy starts, <laughs> goes, dude, I'll come up and sit there. And you sit back with him. I'm like, I don't want to sit in the second row. I want to get a guitar pick. I am going to get a guitar pick. He's like, that's really the reason? I go, well, and I want to be in the front row, so just bug off. Because there was nobody. There was like five security dudes and a gap like, you know, almost three feet. So Iron Maiden comes on. They're, they do some old song I can't remember. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going crazy. Everybody's going crazy. So I keep, you know, to Dave Murray, like, pick, pick, you know, throw me. So he keeps throwing me picks, and they go right over me. And even Doofus and Dingy were missing the picks. And I'm like, throw one right down here, I'll jump. And he's like, so he gets a pick, and he's, and he throws it on the ground. And I jumped over the barrier, grabbed the pick, and then sat back down, and the his security guard is like, all right, don't do that. I'm like, hey, I got my pick. And it's in my pick collection. I got a big collection of picks. Huge. They're in a frame in the case, actually. And that's not even all of them. That's just the ones that can fit in the case. I've got any band you can think of. I don't care. You know, if it was a big band, I liked them. I would go up and I'd either get it while they were playing, which is very hard to do or backstage and or if you meet him ask him like ace freely i uh never could get a pick from him i got a million of them now but uh this is in the 80s and he's walking into the rainbow and i was walking out and i'm like oh no and i follow him back in and i'm like hey you got a pick he's like you got a guitar <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm like that sounded like Mr. Krabs, but he's like, yeah, I actually, I think I might have one, and he pulls out a, he goes, yeah, it says uh, Freely's Comet, and I'm like, cool, oh, it's the other guitar player, and he's like, ah, you know, too bad, and I'm like, eh, I'll take it, because at least Ace touched it and gave it to me, and then, you know, I got a ton of them when Kiss played at the Troubadour, so a million Gene and Paul, I got literally, like, hundreds of them, me and my friend just grabbed all of them off the mic stands and and he found a bag and I got a ton of uh, Jakey Lee picks I hate Jakey Lee but my idiot ex you know singer from Trick or Treat him the, those two were going to go on like a three month tour the uh, Wicked Alliance tour I'm not going to say his name because I don't want it brought up because I'm going to bring him up again in another story but I actually went down and drove him and his stupid dog and all his hair weave down to Jake's house. And uh, they uh, had a bus and they were all loading crap on. And then Jake and him got in a fight about the dog. The dog wasn't going to go. And so I'm like, dude, I'm out of here. And he goes, here, just help me load some of this up. I go, don't you have anybody to help you? Well, our roadies will meet us on the road, but nobody's here. I'm like, wow, this is high class. Nice bus, but whatever. So I saw his picks. Took one bag of them. So I got a ton of them. 
And uh, I think they say on the back, Ray Who, which I think the guy's dead, the singer that died and he quit before, you know, uh, Badlands. So he was, like, making fun of him, and now he's dead. So Jake's an idiot no matter what, what he does. I, I just don't like him. That's not Iron Maiden, though. So first Iron Maiden is me at the Greek uh, dealing with Marilyn Manson and Twiggy Ramirez. The other time, the first time I saw him, Orange Pavilion, Killers Tour, uh, went back, got backstage, met all of them. Didn't get one autograph or one pick. But we, I met him. And this was like 80, 80? 81? And I thought, I was confused. I thought they were like punk. Especially when they went to the show. It's like, everything was like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, holy crap. But I liked, I liked them. So when Number of the Beast came out, I'm like, oh yeah. There we go. This is it. They got a good, because I didn't like the old singer. I didn't like anybody with short hair. George Lynch. Anybody that wouldn't grow their hair couldn't stand them. You had to have hair in the 80s. Long, good, cool, straight hair like me. I had the perfect hair. Everybody else, whatever. So, uh, first time I met Iron Maiden was in like 80, the Killers Tour. I met them, Orange Pavilion, when they were playing out there. Then I saw them again at the Long Beach Arena. And they played with the Scorpions. And that was in 80-whatever. Whenever they were doing the Number of the Beast tour. What is that, 81? 80, 81, 82? Something like that. Didn't meet him. Then they came back, and they had the same management as Wasp. Or Wasp had their management. And I knew Chris Holmes and Randy and Blackie Flagless. I just told this story about Blackie and Chris. Kevin DeBro that I will not repeat, but it made this guy sick. And hey, it's, you know, Blackie's a... And, you know, Kevin DeBro. But whatever. Whatever. So, not Iron Maiden. Uh, so, this time, I had an in, and I didn't really care because I was too busy doing my thing. I, you know, playing in my bands, and I was going to the Rainbow to either fish for a trout, or relax hang out and just whatever meet people talk to them and i was always let in when i was at my height and mario knew me he's like in in because he knew i'd bring a bunch of people in so uh, this was around gosh 87 86 87 uh, somewhere in time i think and i got uh i went down there to meet a friend of mine went to the rainbow and was it Dave Murray no was it Steve Harris and Dave Murray and the drummer ah, what's his name he's got a goofy name and I can't think of it right now the drummer uh, those three I remember and we were sitting I was sitting in the back because that's where the uh, the seems like all the guys from Britain or England or whatever would sit in the back bar and until they were ready to go eat because they knew the proper way it was kind of set up like a pub. You know, the idiots in Hollywood, you were, as soon as you went in, you started circling the tables so you could sit down. Those guys went straight to the bar until their table was ready. I didn't know that's the way it was done until I actually went to England and saw how pubs worked. So I'm like, they're sitting at the bar. So I went up and talked to Steve Harris and Googly Doogly, the drummer. See, I can't give good darn maiden stories because I was never a huge fan. And I didn't wear a shirt all the time. I had shirts. I have them. I went to every show up until uh, 90 two three whenever the whenever bruce dickinson left i stopped and then when he came back i went i've been to four shows since then uh, the last one was uh like three or four years ago at irvine meadows they're still perfect i mean they sound great and what was amazing at irvine was 
half of the crowd was in their 20s and Hispanic. I'm like, what is the deal with, you know, Latin America as Mexican? Because my girlfriend from the 80s, she was uh, Mexican or half Mexican, half Spanish, as she would say. She loved Iron Maiden, but hated everything else. That was all in the punk. She was hot, though, so that's all it counted. So that's like my Iron Maiden stories, and the only funny one is, you know, doofus uh, Marilyn Manson begging me. And they didn't stop, you know, doing this to me or the other people, but they found out when I was alone that they just wanted to switch with me. And I'm like, no. And after the show, I turned around and I said, dude, I met you before. And I told him that my band, Trick or Treat, he remembered that because he used to come out here in the summers and visit, I guess, his other grandparents or something. And he'd always go to Hollywood and see bands. Trick or Treat was my, my, uh, me and okay that's the other story so my friend the singer that I had in trick or treat just find out who he is because I ain't going to say his name Roar. There, that'll give you a, a hint to his last name so <laughs> after he was in my band he made he was uh, he got signed to Hollywood Records with another with his other stupid band but he had great, you know, backup. He had Vinny Apice or Apice and Jimmy Bain. Great. So he had a solid rhythm. And he had this new guitar player, Tracy G. I'm still not saying his name or the band's name. And they were supposed to open up the first leg of the North American tour, Iron Maiden, 1990, whatever album that was. And he gave me, you know, passes. I went there both nights. And both nights the guitar player froze. And it was the first night I thought it was a joke, like a gimmick, because they were handing out, I mean, Hollywood Records put out, everybody got a poster, a free poster, and a cassette with a couple songs. Everybody that was walking in to the show, Iron Maiden show, everybody got a da 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 poster from that band. So they start. Had some opening thing, and then the guitar player was just scrunched down. And he later on, this guitar player went in and played with Dio. He's actually a very guitar player. He just froze when he saw thousands and thousands of people. So he froze the first night. They got booed off the stage. Everybody's throwing cassettes at him. This is an Iron Maiden, you know, opening. So, you know, I can say this story. Cassettes bouncing off of everything, and people are just ripping up the posters and throwing them at it. It was, it. I felt bad for him, even though he screwed me over a couple of times. <laughs> Second night, same thing. Boom, they were booted off the tour. Unbelievable. The guy gets his first, the, the band, the first band to get signed to the Hollywood Records label, which doesn't exist anymore. It was a Disney thing. And. They get thrown off the Iron Maiden tour, and then they get dumped by the label, and he's done. Karma is a bitch, isn't it? And he never recovered from that, really. He thinks that he's a legend in his own mind, but he rewrote history and rewrote me, my band, his first band that he was ever in, right out of it. So, but that was an Iron Maiden story only because... He was opening, so I got in. I had passes. Didn't bother going back, I don't think. We went backstage. I can ask my friend. The only time I ever talked to him was at the Rainbow, and it was nothing big. The best time was like Lemmy. When Lemmy first started hanging out at the Rainbow, and I walked in, all my hair done and you know makeup all chicked out. you know, And I looked totally different than I do now. I weighed like 148, 150 pounds, high heels, you know, black uh, leather pants, whatever. It worked. Lemmy sees me, and he's like, come here. And he's like, I don't get, he goes, you're, you know, you're not a, a puff, puff, the, it was, he called me a puff, or a puff, puff. I go, no. 
He goes, and then, you know, a couple girls came up to me, and they're like, yeah, and I'm like, I'm talking, I'm, I want to talk to this guy, because, you know, Ace of Spades and all that, he's, he's something. That's all I knew, Ace of Spades. This guy is somebody. So we talked for a couple hours, he ordered me a few Long Islands, and he just, we talked about, what, how weird is it that I dress up like a chick, and I get a bunch of chicks. He goes, you ever get dues hit? I go, yes. I do. He goes, what? Are, I go, he says, there are a, a lot of people. I go, I'm finding out more and more that uh, about a quarter of the guys down here are that way. And me being the duh that I was, I just thought, you know, everybody's dressing up and putting on makeup to look cool. Not as cool as me. But, uh, sorry, that's the only Iron Maiden stories I got. So I'm going to play something, or play nothing, for a minute, and then that'll be that. Ready? Set. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> trying to get people to watch anymore so if you watch 
There's my, if I can think of another maiden story, because I know there's another one in there. I just can't remember what. Because I met everybody. I met everybody. And that's all I can think of, alright? Metal. Sven Gulli time, buddy. I'm gonna go watch Sven Gulli. You do the same. <laughs>